Hi, this is TH Culhain for Solar Cities, and tonight we're working on solutions to the aluminum waste problem. We've just gotten back from a trip with Dr. Alton Byers on the National Geographic Blackstone Ranch Emerging Explorers Innovation Grant, where we were looking at environmental problems and solutions in the Kumbu region of Nepal on the route, the trekkers route from Lukla up to Everest Base Camp. And we're doing our work in particular in the small village of Dingboche at 4,400 meters. And there, as in the rest of the Kumbu area, people are bringing in a lot of aluminum, particularly beverage cans, beer cans and soda cans, but aluminum foil as well. And that aluminum, after being used, is discarded. It's not being carried down out of the Trekkers Trail. And so it's ending up in waste dumps, in landfills, or just dumped into the river, or dumped into pits, and often burned. We believe that since people have gone to the trouble of bringing all of this incredibly high energy aluminum up to these high elevations, that it is worth using that energy. And one idea is to capture some of the residual, air, um, residual energy from aluminum oxidation by creating some low voltage batteries. The problem has traditionally been that aluminum, when made into a, ha a homemade, handmade battery, generally uh, delivers very low amperages. And you can get per cell about a half a volt, and it could be wired in series, but the amperage is really low, and so it isn't really useful. However, people have demonstrated that you can take aluminum cans and you can make batteries from them to run small LED lights. The best way to harvest that energy turns out to be with an invention that came out in 1999. It's a simple circuit called a Joule Thief, J-O-U-L-E for the unit of energy, joules, and it involves a torus, that is one of these, and some wire that is wrapped in the torus like this and after about seven to ten turns simply taking the wire and putting it around the torus like this then you have a, uh, a way of amplifying the amount of voltage that is coming out using a one kilo ohm resistor and using an NPN transistor and then this 3 volt LED can be lit <clears throat> with a low voltage source like this 1.5 volt battery. Normally if you try to take a 1.5 volt battery and you take a 3 volt LED then when you try to light it you will see that nothing happens. Nothing at all. For this LED to light you need two batteries and only when you have three volts will this LED light up. So as you can see this single three volt LED needs the three volts from these batteries to light. And this is a bright LED, the kind that they use up in the Kumbu, not only for flashlights, but also in rooms in the lodges. But you need a three volt source, that is, until the jewel thief. So once again, I'm going to show you here with a single battery, we get nothing. But if I take this same battery and I take the same LED, and mounted on top of this Joule Thief, which is this torus wired to this one kilo ohm resistor and this NPN resist, uh, transistor, then you will see <clears throat> you will see now when I attach it that there it goes. Now I'm using a single battery to light the same LED. Now what it's doing is it's drawing more current in order to step up the voltage, but this does enable us to use a single battery for lighting the LED. Now what that implies is that if we are able to light a 3 volt LED with a 1.5 volt battery, 
then we might be able to use the aluminum cans which produce about 0.5 to 0.7 volts and wire two in series and using the jewel thief we might be able to harvest enough of that energy to light a light. That is our goal. For right now we just wanted to show how easy it was to make the jewel thief. So what is the jewel thief basically? The jewel thief is it's a torus and I used a fairly big one but you can use different size toruses and it's wrapped in wire and then that wire two of the wires on the opposite sides are simply bound together and then they go out to the positive terminal of the battery and then the other two wires one of them goes to the resistor and then the resistor goes to the base of the transistor. The other wire goes to the collector of the transistor as well as to the LED, um, to the input of the LED. And then out of the LED it goes to the negative terminal of the battery and it also goes to the emitter of the transistor. We flip this over. So once again you have here the emitter. You have the emitter of the transistor going to the output side of the LED and to the negative terminal of the battery while the positive terminal of the battery goes into the torus and around and then one of the wires, in our case the red wire, splits off and goes up to the resistor and then goes the resistor goes into the base of the transistor and then the collector goes back into the torus. There is a circuit diagram available for this. So once again if I take my 3 volt LED and I try to use it with a 1.5 volt battery as you can see nothing happens. If I take that same 3 volt LED and I put it on two 1.5 volts connected in series then you can see definitely the light goes on as it should because it's a 3 volt LED. But if I take that same LED and I have it hooked up through a Jewel Thief circuit then I can take the single battery and there it is, the single battery of a 1.5 volt battery is lighting up <coughs> is lighting up a 3 volt LED. But that's not the most remarkable thing, that's just a transformation. The nicest thing is that it will work with what otherwise seem to be dead batteries that are not doing their job. So if we take a battery that is considered dead it's a weaker light, but it still goes on. Thanks.